Hello and welcome to the first episode of Reptiles Down Under, a mini-series where I focus on Australia's reptilian wildlife and talk to you guys about how cool they are. In this episode, we will be looking at the Australian Water Dragon, also known as the Eastern Water Dragon, one of Australia's iconic lizards that calls the land down under its home. These marvelous dinosaur-like creatures belong to the Agamidae family of lizards, which also includes species such as the Bearded Dragon, one of the most common lizards seen in the pet trade, both within Australia and outside of Australia, the Frill Neck Lizard, the Jackie Dragon, and the Boyd's Forest Dragon, and many more. They are called Water Dragons because of their draconic appearance, which can be observed from the row of spines that they have along the length of their body from the cranial crest till the tip of its tail and also because they are typically found near ponds, creeks and other such bodies of water. Australian water dragons are large to medium sized lizards ranging in size from 80 to 90 centimeters which is about 30 to 36 inches from snout tip to tail tip for all my fellow Americans out there. Males tend to be larger with broader heads, prominent jowls, and more vibrant red chest coloration, which appears to be even more vibrant during the mating season. Australian water dragons are typically found in rainforest type environments, but some have also adapted to life in the concrete jungle by seeking refuge in parks where there is access to large bodies of water. They are perfectly adapted to life in a semi aquatic semi-arboreal lifestyle. They have muscular legs with sharp claws to help them climb. They also possess a long, tapered, laterally compressed tail, which can act as a rudder and paddle to aid them in swimming. Think of it like the oar of a boat. Dragons often resort to making a beeline towards large bodies of water, or a pond of some sort, to escape pursuit from predators, or to escape the wrath of an angry dominant male dragon. These guys are quite territorial. They can even stay submerged and hold their breath for up to 25 minutes, which can be very handy if they need to evade predators or a rival male for an extended period of time. In regards to predation, large adult dragons are primarily preyed upon by birds of prey, snakes, and foxes, whereas smaller dragons have more enemies to fear, such as cats and kookaburras. When threatened, dragons will whip with their tail, bite, or scratch. However, if they are grabbed by their tail, they do have the capability to do what is called caudal autotomy, where the lizard breaks a portion of its tail off, and the broken tail acts as a distraction for the predator, and the lizard runs away to safety. They are capable of growing back their tail if they have adequate nutrition. However, not all members of the Agamid family of lizards are capable of detaching their tails. For example, bearded dragons do not have this ability to detach their tails. Australian water dragons are inquisitive and intelligent lizards and have their own system of communication. They can bob their heads up and down like a punk rock star to indicate that they're the biggest, baddest blokes on the block. Try saying that three times fast. This is a dominance or territorial display. They do this to warn other males in order to assert their dominance and ownership of a particular area. It also allows them to assert their dominance over a harem of females and establish order. When greeted by a marauding male, they will do this posture plus arch their tail to appear even more intimidating to scare off the rival male. So this big guy here is an adult male eastern water dragon. So the males are easily distinguished from the females by having a very large wide head thick muscular legs and they're overall just larger and girthier. Um, this particular male is ruling over this area, this landscape here, and he will guard it fiercely from rivals. He will do that typical head bobbing display to scare off any rival males um, because they're very territorial animals. Yeah, so even though lizards, and people think lizards are unintelligent animals, no. These guys have a complicated system of communication. Head bobbing is a very dominant display, whereas arm waving is considered to be a more of a submissive display. 
We don't usually see that from the big dominant males, but typically females and smaller males will arm wave in order to indicate to the dominant male that they're not a threat. In terms of hunting, they are omnivores. They will eat insects, and the larger dragons will also eat small fish, crustaceans, small mollusks, and small mammals like a small mice. Uh, the younger ones will stick exclusively to insects. However, as they get older, they will include more plant matter into their diet. So he will be just as content eating the leaves, berries, and flowers of a shrub as he would be chopping on a cockroach. But this particular individual, I've seen him munching on a biscuit a child dropped earlier. And the reason being is that these particular dragons, they are used to life in um, human inhabited territory. So they kind of had to adapt. So that's one of the reasons why they're so used to people. <laughs> is that uh, people feed them a bunch of junk and they'll eat it. And um, that's not part of their natural diet, but they're still thriving. It just shows you how hardy these animals are. So what we have here is a female eastern water dragon. And if you look closely, her torso is kind of rotund. This means she's gravid. Gravid means pregnant with eggs. So around this time in Australia, when the weather gets more warm, like in late September, early October, it is their breeding season. The males are getting busy with their harems of females. And once the female is pregnant with her eggs and it's time to lay them, she will actually dig about a 10 to 18 centimeter deep burrow in sandy soil and she will deposit her eggs. They lay between 6 to 18 eggs, average around 9 eggs. And um, she will then pack the nest by kicking back sand on top of the nest. And once that happens, she will now and then check on her nest to make sure it hasn't been disturbed. If it has been disturbed, she will fix the nest. But once the hatchlings hatch and once they come out of their egg, the mother no longer protects them. It's a tough love type of deal. She will just... Uh, move on with her lives and the offspring will have to fend for themselves. Isn't that right, ma'am? Female Australian water dragons can be distinguished from the males by having a more slender and elegant build with a head that isn't too wide. Females usually tend to be less vibrant in coloration as well. This particular female also appears to be gravid as she has a rather disproportionately wide abdominal region. As mentioned earlier, she will dig up a burrow to lay her eggs in and will watch over them until they hatch. Upon hatching, the hatchlings are on their own. However, they're already more than capable of taking care of themselves as they will begin to forage for food and look for shelter. As with most animals in Australia, the Australian water dragon is protected in all states and territories where it occurs naturally, such as Queensland, New South Wales, the Australian Capital Territory, and Victoria. And it is not listed as threatened in any state or territory. Despite being a common sight in most parts of Australia, they are also kept as pets and can be quite rewarding if you are willing to put in the time and effort to raise these mini dragons. However, as with any animal, I implore you to do plenty of ample research so that you have an extensive understanding about the care and husbandry regarding these particular animals or any animal, as mentioned before, any animal, any pet that you get, do your research before you get them because you want to make sure you give them the best life possible and it will be better for you and the animal. Water dragons, as with many species, are important to the environment as they play an essential role in maintaining the balance in the local ecosystem, whether it be in the rainforest environments, a local park, creek, or in your very own backyard. Their main job is to keep the insect population in check, and therefore it is very important to protect them. As such, please respect these animals and do not assume that they are out to get you. I always thought I might be that, and now I know that it's true, cause I think you're so good.
And I'm nothing like you, look at you go, I just adore you and the things that you do. What makes me think you're so special?